everyone. Today we will be discussing a serial rapist and killer from Wisconsin. David Spanbauer was born in January of 1941 to a German Catholic family. He was the oldest child and had two younger sisters. David had a strained relationship with his father. His father passed away when David was 14. Through the remainder of his teenage years, David was in trouble with the law. He attended high school in Oshkosh and dropped out shortly after his 17th birthday. David joined the Navy but didn't do much better there than he did at home. He managed to acquire three court marshals for being absent without leave and spent seven months in the brig, which is basically Navy jail. Navy doctors thought that David would benefit from psychiatric care and sent a letter to his mother explaining this, but no psychiatric care was ever sought. Once home, he tried to return to high school, but very shortly after this, he dropped out for a second time. His psychological issues drove him to commit his very first crime. On January 3, 1960, he broke into a home in Appleton. He stole two diamond rings, a hunting knife, a bottle of liquor, cash, and a 22 caliber handgun. The following night, he robbed a home in Nina with the handgun he had previously stolen. Side note, I grew up in Nasha, which neighbors Appleton and Nina, so this is right in the area I grew up in. On February 16, 1960, he was arrested for an attempted robbery in Milwaukee. During the police questioning, he completely broke down and admitted to raping a couple girls. A week after the robbery in Appleton, he broke into the home of a 13-year-old girl and raped her behind the garage of her own house. That wasn't all, though. On the night of January 12, 1960, he raped Carol Grady while she was babysitting her cousins. He also committed his first murder that day. He shot her uncle in the face when he returned home. At the age of 19, Spanbauer was tried in a Wisconsin court. The judge labeled him a sexual deviant and handed down a 70-year sentence. After spending 13 years in prison, Spanbauer was released on parole and was making some positive steps with his life. He attended school at a medicine area technical college and was maintaining a B grade point average. He was staying at the YMCA on the campus of the University of Wisconsin. This positive direction didn't last long at all, and soon he was making bad choices. He let an escaped prisoner borrow his car, and the escapee used his car to commit a robbery in Middleton and was arrested. Spanbauer got lucky that he wasn't sent right back to prison for this. In the summer of 1972, Spanbauer worked for the city in the parks and at city beaches. Summer drew in and lots of young college students spent much of their time at these places. This proved to be too much for Spanbauer, and when he brought up his sexual frustrations, the psychiatrist ignored this and called Spanbauer stupid. Since this cry for help was ignored, horrible things were to come. August 16, 1972. Spanbauer was again arrested for the abduction and rape of a hitchhiker. In May 1973, his parole was revoked, and he was sent right back to prison for the original charges against him. He was also given an additional 18 years for this crime. However, the judge allowed this sentence to be run concurrently to his Brown County sentence. He is again released in 1991. August 23, 1992. Ronelle Eichstedt disappeared while riding her bike in rural Fond du Lac County. On September 30th, her body is found in a farm field in Iowa County, which is in southwestern Wisconsin. On July 3, 1994, a 24-year-old Illinois woman is the target of an attempted abduction by Spanbauer near Hartman Creek State Park in Wapaka County. That same day, Spanbauer robbed a residence in Appleton. July 9, 1994, 21-year-old Trudy Jeske is shot to death in a Northside Appleton home after catching a burglar in the act. September 5, 1994, 12-year-old Cora Jones disappears from Wapaka County. September 10, 1994, two hunters discover the body of Cora Jones in Landglide County. October 13, 1994, Spanbauer robs another Appleton residence. October 20, 1994, a 15-year-old girl is sexually assaulted in her Appleton home. November 5, 1994, a 31-year-old woman is sexually assaulted in her Appleton home. November 14, 1994, Spanbauer is arrested in combined locks after attempting to break into a residence. Spanbauer was tackled by homeowner Gerald Argel after fleeing on foot behind his residence. November 15, 1994, Spanbauer confesses to the attempted abduction near Hartman Creek State Park. November 18, 1994, Spanbauer confesses to the Eichstead, Jeske, and Jones murders and sexual assaults in Appleton.
Van Bauer is sentenced to three consecutive life terms plus 405 years. David Van Bauer died in prison on July 29, 2002, from complications due to heart and liver disease at the age of 61. According to the local newspaper, the Post Crescent, no one stepped forward to claim the body, and prison officials state that no funeral service will be held. They will bury him, and it brings me joy that he was alone in death.